So some questions keep coming up again and again. And one of the main ones in Microsoft land is I've lost my files. Where do I go? Where's the latest version? In this video, we're going to take a look at where do my attachments live? Microsoft Planner edition, because Microsoft Planner, with its, some of its nuances, also overlays some new ways to lose your files, which we'll dig into in this video. I'm Gavin Jones, founder and director of MeTime, where we help organizations be more efficient by getting more out of Microsoft 365 because you're already paying for it. If you would like to know what we can do for you, for your organization, then book a call using the link in the description below. So this was from a message from a viewer with a video suggestion about how can he find his files in Planner. So love someone to show how file attachments in Planner, Teams chats and other places are saved under the hood in their SharePoints. So we'll dive into Planner, have a look at Teams attachments as well and chats. We've covered a bit of those before, but Planner is new. If you don't want to watch this video, I get it. If you just want to know what to do, just do this. If you get your team's structure right first, it makes everything else easier or irrelevant. If you are using a planner, set it up in a team, which we'll have a look at. If you don't have to do that, we'll have a look at that in this video later on. So stick around if you're interested in that. Also, if you've got any other video ideas that you want me to cover, let me know in the comments below. And if you are struggling with finding files across Microsoft ecosystem, also comment below and let me know if you're in the same boat. Like I say, too long didn't watch is just set a planner up in your existing team. So how to do that is come into Teams, come into the team that you want the planner to live in. So for example, my content plan lives in this MeTime Limited team. Click, if you don't have that, click add a tab, click planner, once you're in the team you want the plan to live in, and then you can create a new plan, call it something meaningful, because now when you go into the new planner, if you just leave it as tasks, you might have lots of other things just called tasks, so make it meaningful to what is gonna be housed in that plan. Or you can use an existing plan from the team if you already set one up and you just wanna show a different view in a different channel, say. But if you create a planner that way, at least that's one step of not, be, not having to lose your files. Second step is put all of your files in the team. So don't have a separate SharePoint site, put all the files in the files tab of the relevant channel. And again, if you need help structuring your team, that is the most important thing, book a call using the link in the description below if you've got an organizational wide issue that you want help solving. That's usually the biggest thing that we can do to make, make people more efficient and save people time and get them working more modern out in the open with a digital equivalent of an open plan office. If you want to know more about that, we do have a free workshop, training, whatever you want to call it. That's linked in the description below as well. It walks you through the sort of thinking to get your organization working more out in the open and structuring your team. So that might be useful if you've not watched that already. But if you put your planner in the team, then it saves one way of losing stuff, but you can still lose things. So once you've got your files in the team, I, I would always say train people, go and put your file where it should live and then link back to that file rather than attaching it because you end up losing things by attaching it. So if we come into planner, this is a planner edition of losing your files or where do my file, or where do my file attachments live? If you come into attachments, you've got three options from your computer, which I would, would not recommend doing because it's not going to go in the place that it's supposed to go. From Teams files, so you can link back to anything you've already put in the right place. Or if you just want to grab an, uh, a URL, if it's on the web, or it might not be even a file, it's just like a link to a Teams chat, so we've done a lot. You can put that in there as well. If you do from Teams files, you can go and pick where it is and then go and select the file and, and link to it. That's the best way. How you might have already lost your file is you've uploaded it from your computer, if we do that. So if I go and pick Microsoft, Cloud Partner Program Benefits Guide that's in my downloads. Open that, click open. It doesn't actually open it. It's it's uploading it. It uploads it. This planner, as we saw, was in the MeTime Limited team and it's going to be saved in the team. But if we go back to the Teams view, you might be forgiven for thinking that file would end up in the Files tab somewhere, which it doesn't. Because if we jump into SharePoint, when we attach a file in Planner, it actually saved it, not in any channel folder. It's like we 
said in the workshop that you might have already looked at and if you haven't click on the link in the description below every time you set up a channel it sets up a folder in the sharepoint site that's associated with that team the reason you can simplify your work by getting your team structure right first is it sets up lots of other stuff in the background in microsoft land and the simpler we can make that the easier it is for all involved it simplifies the training it simplifies the way people are working but you can see if we jump out it's saving all of those planner attachments so here's some of the ones i did when the uh, video recording failed and i've had to re-record it again the, uh, this one that just put in microsoft ai cloud partner program benefits guide is in the root of the sharepoint document library not in any channel folder so anything stored outside of these four folders with these four channels you won't be able to get to from the team you have to jump out in sharepoint to get into the root and i guess a bit worse than that if we go back into planner is you can't clean up those files straight from planner so even if we go back to the same card and try and delete that file so well actually we don't need that anymore we could delete it if we remove it it just removes it from this card it doesn't remove it from the sharepoint site so if we refresh that it would still be there and same thing that i just did before this video recorded well actually i did record it it crashed and i had to re-record it i did remove that and it hasn't removed it from the sharepoint site you can avoid all that by just doing what i said at the start just link from teams files go and pick where it is and link it there don't attach stuff straight into planner similarly if you jump into teams don't attach things straight from teams always do browse teams and channels go and pick the file because it's just linking to where the file's already saved you can link to any other place in the team so it doesn't matter if it's in a, in a different channel you can still go and link back to that because the permissions are held at the team level. If you upload from this device, you're going to have the same issue. So again, if we pick this uh, local tennis club application, click open, it uploads it. And even if you haven't posted it, it's already uploaded it and it's put it in the root of general. So if you had loads of your folder structure already sorted, every time someone uploads something into a Teams post, it's just going to be a sea of files. So always train people. If you've got a folder structure, sort it out, which again, help organizations sort out what their folder structure should be. The simplest folder structure that people are gonna follow, make sure they put it in the right folder and then link to it from the post rather than uploading it in a post because it's gonna end up in the root of the folder. So at least it doesn't end up in the root of the SharePoint site. So you can still see it from the team, but it ends up not in any, say we had a folder structure here, which you don't have any at the moment. So, and there's only one file, so it's easy to see. But we could, if everyone's doing that across the whole organization, we're going to have a sea of files, not in any folder. You're quickly going to lose stuff. We've got new videos coming out on Microsoft at work at least every week. So make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified every time one of those comes out. Teams chat is even worse than that. So again, if once you've gone through, if, assuming you listen to me and follow my advice, if you set your team structure up right with one main team, the bigger the team you can get or the closer you can stick to one main team, for the entire organization, the simpler it's going to be, obviously depending on the size of the organization, is how closely you can stick to that principle or not, and how, and how much privacy you need from different departments. Once you've got that team, do not use Teams chat for work, because if you end up using group chats still, one, you don't know, one, it's siloed, so other people can't see it, so that you don't know whether you're put, posting stuff in the channel or posting stuff in the chat, remove that uncertainty if it's work it goes in this channel for a specific thing the file goes in that channel for a specific thing if you're still using group chats one it's siloed two you're getting notified every time someone puts something in there because it's either on or off unlike threaded conversations in teams channels and most relevant to this video you're going to lose the file because when you upload a file into a teams chat it goes into the OneDrive of the person that shared it not in sharepoint not in teams they're not linked they might might create a separate version in that person's OneDrive. And if they leave, you need a process of retaining those files somewhere. And you won't know if you're central and not to do with what they're working on, which is the latest file. Is it the one that's in the person's OneDrive or have they put it in the team, or have they put it in the SharePoint site? When I go into an organization, they've probably got at least three, four different versions of files all over the place, which is what we can help solve and remove confusion and improve efficiency for knowledge workers so again if you're interested in working together click the book a call link in the description below so back to planner because it's planner edition losing your files planner makes it one step worse so 
if you put your plan into a team, you can still lose stuff because it goes into the root unless you link it. You can still lose stuff because you can set a planner up that's not in a team. So if we've got a private plan uh, now with a new planner, that doesn't actually let you attach a file by uploading it because it's not back, actually backed in the background by a Microsoft group and therefore a Microsoft SharePoint site. So you can only link to a URL. So at least you're not going to lose your file because it forces you to link somewhere. You can make that plan a group without adding it to a team. So you can add it to an existing group. And most of those are going to be teams if you follow my advice. But there's other ways to set Microsoft groups as well that don't have a team. And one of those ways is by just creating a, a group from planner so before the new planner came out with private plans you could only have like public plans which create if you want to create a plan it creates a group which is why i say if you've got a team that is already creating a microsoft group you can add the plan to that team and therefore add a plan to that group if you set up a brand new group it's got a separate sharepoint site you're going to end up losing your files if you attach them in so if we did I don't know, I think I've, because I already recorded this video once and it crashed, I need to pick a new name, test, share, planner, create group. So we've got a plan called product plan test in test, share, planner. It's going to create a brand new Microsoft group, a brand new SharePoint site, a brand new document library to house all those files. So now that private plan isn't private anymore. So obviously we haven't changed the name. If we go and attach something and we've got no other view into that group, so we're going to have to upload it from our computer, we go and pick, say, the same file. It uploads it. We can open it from there and see it's gone into private plan test. If we didn't jump out into that file onto the web, if we go into SharePoint, we can't ever see that SharePoint site that's associated with that group because unhelpfully, even if you go into the SharePoint view, you can't see every site that you're, you've got access to. You can only see frequent sites and then make more frequent sites. So unless you've like done something in that site, it doesn't pop up in your frequent site. So even though we've uploaded a file, that isn't enough to go and show us that site and frequent site so you can search for it, but it's unlikely to come back. In my experience, test shared, search for that, narrow it to sites, it's not there. So we can't see it that way. We can come through and maybe get rid of some of that URL. And now we're in private plan test. And if we come into the documents, then we can see the files there. So there is a site in the black background that's holding that file but it's quite difficult to go back to so that's another way that you might lose your files in planner again going back to the very start if you just sort your teams out and add a plan to that team you're going to shortcut all of that pain don't ever attach a file always put it in the right place and then link to it and your losing files days will be over so let me know if that was helpful in the comments below, do you, did you were you losing files in Planner because of that before? Let me know in the comments below. And if you've got any other ideas for videos that you want me to cover, let me know in the comments below as well. Happy to take a look at those. If you like this video, before you go, remember to click the thumbs up button. It really helps us in the algorithm. Click the subscribe button and the bell icon. If you haven't already, to get notified every time new videos come out. We've got new videos on Microsoft at work coming out at least every week. If you want even more help via YouTube, because it's easy to get to, you can consider joining the channel for a small monthly fee. Help support the channel to keep these videos coming out for free. And depending on your tier, it depends on what other support you might need. So you can get early access to questions in the comments if you're a lower tier subscriber. If you're a middle tier, you get access to all the new videos coming out before everyone else, if that's useful. And if you're a top tier member, then you get access into live Q&A with me and all the repeats and members only videos. So we've got some training videos in there for free that have been sold in the past 
for a much higher price and we keep adding to those when we can. So if that's helpful for you, if you're an individual or a very small business, that might be all you need to get going. And if you need more help for an organizational level, consider booking a call using the link in the description below so we can help sort out your entire organization to be more efficient using Microsoft 365. But thanks for watching so far and we'll see you in the next one.